Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to look at how to fetch dynamic credentials for databases using Vault Secrets Operator for our Kubernetes workloads. So let's get to it. All right, let's first understand at a high level how this is going to work. In our demo, we are going to use Postgres as our database. So first, we are going to create a super user role for Vault Server in Postgres. This role will allow Vault to connect to the Postgres and create credentials for our application. In your organization, you may want to work with a DBA team to create this role instead of setting it yourself. Next, we'll need to configure the database secrets engine inside Vault, and this will include few steps from enabling the database engine to configure the connection between Vault and Postgres, and then creating a new role for your application. But we'll see how to do all that in our demo. Now let's see how VSO is actually going to fetch these dynamic credentials and make it available to your application. For dynamic credentials, we are going to create a custom resource called Vault Dynamic Secret, which includes the specification to manage a dynamic secret. In our case, it's a database credential. So the VSO is going to use this specification to request a new credential. And as Vault receives the request, it communicates with the Postgres database to generate a new credential and then return it to the VSO. Then VSO can synchronize the returned Vault secret to a native Kubernetes secret object. If the secret is already present, it'll update the secret. And if it wasn't present before, it's going to create a new secret object. And this secret object can be mounted or used by your application just like any other Kubernetes secret. So that explains the overall workflow of how these dynamic secrets are managed by VSO. And now let's jump into our demo. So here I have my local kind cluster created. And in the previous video, we already looked at how to set up Vault and VSO with Kubernetes authentication. So I'm not going to repeat those steps here, but you can find the link to that video and the GitHub repository in the description box below. So ensure that your Vault and VSO is already set up correctly before following these next steps. So let's do our Postgres setup first, and then we'll move on to configure Vault. First, let's add the Helm repository for Postgres. And then we're going to deploy our Postgres chart. The auth database parameter here is going to create a new database called a fake app for our application. So let's go ahead and deploy our Helm chart. And now let's open Knights. And while our Postgres pod is getting deployed, let's look at the secrets in the Postgres namespace. So here we have this PostgreSQL secret. And if you're using Knights, you can press X to decode the secret object, or you can use the kubectl command here to first fetch the data and then decode it. This is the admin password for Postgres user, which we are going to use to provision our Vault user. So let's copy this password. And now from the Postgres pod, we'll use the PSQL command and we'll pass the Postgres user and the fake app database name to connect to it. Now let's paste the password that we just copied and we are connected to our database. If you type backslash du, uh, you can see all the roles that your database actually has. And at the moment, we only have the Postgres super user role. So let's create a new role for the Vault server as well. This query here is going to create a role Vault with super user privileges. And to keep things simple, the password for this role is Vault. Let's execute this query. And now that our role is created, we can confirm it with backslash du command again. So this is all the configuration done from database perspective. Now let's go to the vault server and we'll configure our database secrets engine. All right, let's first enable the database secrets engine at the default path. And if we list all the secrets engine, 
we can see a database secrets engine at the default database path is enabled. Next, we are going to configure the connection to our fake app database. So let's go through these parameters. The first is the plugin name, and we are using Postgres plugin. The allow roles part of this configuration specifies which roles are allowed to request secrets for this particular database. If a role isn't on this list, it cannot get secrets. In the next step, we are going to create this role, so it'll become more clear. In the connection URL, first we are providing the username and password for our vault super user that we created inside Postgres. And this part is the host address. And in our case, since we have deployed Postgres inside Kubernetes in the Postgres namespace, this is the service DNS name followed by the port number and then the database name. Okay, now we are going to create the role that we talked about that will allow Vault to create credentials. So first, make sure the role name matches with what you had in the allow roles list. Otherwise, you'll get errors when trying to create credentials. The DB name field here is the configuration name in our previous step. This is actually a little confusing the first time you look at it because it has nothing to do with the actual database name that we have in Postgres. I don't know why they called it DB name instead of config name or something else. So make sure you get this value correct. Next is the SQL query that creates the credential and what type of permissions that credential is going to have. So this is another part of the configuration where you may want to work with a DBA to understand what permissions the application needs through these credentials. And this role generates database credentials with a default TTL of one hour and maximum TTL of 24 hours. Okay, now it's time to test our dynamic credentials. To generate a new credential, we'll use vault read on the creds endpoint with the name of the role that we just created. And there we go. We have the new credential to access the database with one R TTL. But we are able to fetch these credentials only because we are executing these commands as a root user inside vault. Our application role that we created in the last video, it does not yet have the permissions to ask for these credentials. So first, we need to create a policy that will allow the read access to the creds endpoint for the database role. And then we need to assign this new policy to our application role, which will allow our application to finally access those credentials. Now we are finally done with all the configurations inside the vault server. Okay, so now for our application, we are going to create the dynamic secret custom resource. It looks very similar to the static secret resource we created in the last video. So we are providing the mount path for the database secrets engine and then the path for the secret endpoint. It'll create a Kubernetes secret object called Postgres with our credentials. And anytime VSO rotates the credentials when they are about to expire, it'll automatically restart the application deployment. So it can read the new credentials from the secret object. Next, in our deployment manifest, we are going to mount this new secret that contains our database credentials and read those credentials as environment variables. So these were all the changes we had to make on our application side. So let's go ahead and apply the new dynamic resource first. And then let's also reapply the application deployment manifest so that it can read those credentials in our application pod. If you go back to canines and look at the secrets in our fake app namespace, we have this new Postgres secret created by our VSO. And if we decode the secret, we can see the username and password for our database. So now let's go back and shell into our application pod. And let's print all the environment variables and search for Postgres. And here we can see that our application has access to those credentials. 
All right, guys, that's it for this video. Hope you found it useful. And let me know in the comments below if you'd like more videos on Secrets Engines and feel free to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.